And also live transcripts are available if you need. Uh, and I've also cut and pasted um, code of conduct and a tech help uh, contact information if you happen to need it during the session. So take it away, Curtis. Great. Thanks so much, Arlie. Um, so I see some of my colleagues here, which is a good feeling and um, welcome to everyone else. Um, so as Arlie said, I am an associate professor of journalism here at Columbia College Chicago. And I also, um, for the last three years or so, have been advising the Columbia Chronicle, our newspaper and news website. So we're actually uh, more of a, a new site right now as um, many colleges across the country are. Um, so thanks for coming. Uh, one thing I'm gonna ask you to do is just go into the chat and uh, tell us, um, what you do if you if you if you teach if you're a librarian um, would, would would be helpful just to get a sense of um, who's in the room as we go along. Um, hopefully, um, everyone will benefit for this. So my you know I'm coming from the perspective of a advisor to students and a journalism teacher, um, like many of us. Um, I'm awful, often showered with ideas from people who want to do a story, but it's not, it doesn't have to, what I'm talking about today can also apply to projects or maybe you're doing a short doc or um, from a librarian's point of view, it may be somebody who is, um, you know, you may have students who come and inquire and they're just starting to get their wheels churning on, um, um, a, a paper or project they want to pursue. And um, yeah, so how, 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 how many of you, um, you can just raise your hands to this, have had people propose a story um, that's very broad, like gentrification or poverty or homelessness or, okay. Those are, um, you know, something I've heard a lot. And so um, over the years, I mean, you know, how do you get things down? How do you actually start to um, get people to start thinking um, a little um, smaller? So when, when I was covering housing for the Chicago Sun-Times, one of my favorite editor, editors told me he never wanted to hear the word gentrification in a story pitch and let alone see it in a story because it was just so broad that what do you, you know, what do you do with it? And then, and at the Sun Times, which is a tabloid, uh, you know, you don't have time to explain uh, complex ideas. You wanna show people, um, um, not just show them that you know a bunch of big words. Um, so how do you get beyond that wall of these general ideas and get people to think differently? Um, one of the things I want to talk about first is the big difference between an idea and a story pitch. And again, again, this can be for a, um, a paper, um, a research uh, topic, or just about anything. Ideas are big, broad, amorphous. Pitches are sharp, clear, and can be delivered in a 30 second elevator pitch. Um, and that's one thing I think it's early on to start um, talking to students about. Um, I learned this as a young reporter returning to the office after covering maybe a city, city council meeting or a protest or um, some other event. And one of the first things the editor would ask, what's your lead or what's the pitch? Define this story quickly. And if I stumbled around for more than 10 or 15 seconds, I would get met with a, you know, uh, rolling of the eyes or back in those days, you might even get yelled at because that, that was before it wasn't cool to yell at people uh, at work. Um, thank God we've moved past that for everyone. Um, so how do you start uh, shrieking these things, these things down? Um, I'm going to share my screen for a hot second to show you 
a um, YouTube video. Hopefully I do this quickly. Let's see. Should be able to share my screen. Okay, there. And where's my video? Should be. That's my screen. There. And I'm going to go. That's not what I want to show you, but. Uh, so, this is the short video. And the sound is not Curtis. Right. If you stop sharing and then click share with sound, it'll. We'll oh, okay. It. Let me do that. Um, oops. We've all made this mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so you well, need to I actually stop sharing your screen temporarily. Oh. Okay. Let me. I'm even having trouble finding now the bottom of my Zoom screen. So I'm uh -oh. um, let's see if there's something I can do to. Oh, I see. Uh, never mind. I can do. It. I I got it. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's do this again. Um, I'm not seeing share with sound. There should be a little um, checkbox in the bottom left, I think. That yeah, says... bottom left. Oh, I see. Duh. Okay. Like Thank size you. for video clip and share with Thank sound. You. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we're, we're almost. Like, with click that. skip ads there in the lower right. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. But that's not. And then you need to turn the sound the on the video because you've got it volume off. On the video uh, itself. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now hopefully we can go back and do what I wanted to do. Um, Okay, here we go. Mr. Doing. Turtle, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? I never made it without biting. Ask Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. One, two, three, three. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. Okay, so for all of that, <laughs> that trouble we took to get to that, but I thought that was cute and I thought it was a way Rico. to to it's the island of enchantment. Treadmill desk. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Let me... Okay. Okay, are we still here, everybody? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, because I, I was getting some of Okay, well, do stop. So, anyway, um, one of the um, one of the things I like that video because that's kind of what we're doing, right? We're trying to get to the center of it. We're trying to get to the center of that Tootsie Pop, right? And we want to find out what this what actually this story is to get get beneath that. Um, so here I'm going to give you a few tips that will help you do that. One of them is be a persistent questioner when working with your students. Um, Find your inner five-year-old when you're talking to them. And then you're also modeling this behavior for them. So um, one of the ways to do this is to make a big world smaller. If a student approaches me with a story about homelessness, I first ask them, what made them want to write about this? Um, then they'll often present an anecdote, maybe involving the homeless person. Um, where did you see this person? Um, questions like that. When I first um, started teaching here at Columbia, um, the um, Pacific Garden Missions was still here. Um, now we're uh, Jones uh, College Prep is. And um, so they would 
maybe have some interaction with the residents or visitors to the uh, Pacific Gardens mission. Um, some of them may have felt that they were, you know, scared by some of the residents there. Some of them actually were concerned about how the residents were being treated. Um, some of them may have been offended, um, as, as I was sometimes, by people telling me, oh, don't give them money, give to some big organization, you're not helping them, or I don't know if you've heard this regarding um, people on the street, you know, you know they, they really live in a big house somewhere and they're just doing this to raise money or something like that. So all those things. So that's what's, you know, got them going. And then we could write about, okay, good. Then we can zoom in. Maybe we want at the time, you know, there were rumblings about the Pacific Garden missions moving. That's a story. Um, and you're still writing about homelessness and issues that affect them, but it's, you know, we want to get them beyond these really big, you know, um, kind of sometimes amorphous ideas in their head. Um, they're, 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 they're starting from a good place, right? But you want to take them to get them to an actual story. Another tip is um, make, it's part of making this big world smaller is geographically. So um, one conversation I've had with students often is, um, you know, I want to write about gentrification. I'm hearing this, I think it's terrible and I want to write about it. Um, well, you know, we're well, in Chicago, it's all over Chicago. Well, where in Chicago? Chicago is a really big place. How do we start getting down, you know, boiling it down a little bit? Um, and then they might tell me, well, Pilsen, it's going on in Pilsen, okay? Still a big place. If you've ever gone down, you know, um, Pilsen, um, you know, um, from 18th Street, from of either Hosted to Ashland, which is a, a cool walk if, if you're looking for a walk, because it's, it's still filled, even though the, the neighborhood is gentrified, still filled with culture. So how do I want to even, you know, break that down a little more? And one thing I often tell them, and this, this helps reporters, um, especially because they just get overwhelmed, is let's look at a two block radius. And let's look at the home. And in that radius, hopefully I'll find homes. I'll find, you know, people who live there. I'll find businesses. I'll find, um, um, you know, people who have lived there for a range from maybe somebody just moved in six months ago to somebody who's lived there for 50 years. There's, there's, there's boundaries, though, and I just stay within that radius. That also is a way to to keep keep focus and it and and, and it pushes them in, you know that the, the students into talking to people um with specific stories and um so that's why because it's much more it's, it's much more effective to have someone write a story or a paper about someone who has lived somewhere for 40 or 50 years and has to move than a big a story talking to a professor about um, the challenges of, 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 of gentrification. And, and I think that's good. We can talk for a minute and I'll hear from some of you on what you think about this. But I think this is true for whether I'm writing a new story or whether I'm doing an academic paper. I think that emotion and appealing to emotion is, you know, um, is, is always the better path because whatever you're doing, you want people to read it or you want people to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, and my third one is, and I, it took me a while to learn this, but sometimes a big hearty no is the best gift you can give someone. Um, whether than, whether than you know, not wanting to offend them and letting them wander in this vast wilderness for, you know, a week or two uh, and um, not coming up with anything um, specific. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to share um, in the, um, in the, in the chat, a, yeah. 
I'm going to share in the chat for a quick second a, um, so now I actually closed something out I didn't want to close, but I'm going to, so let me, this is not, not having the best day as far as technology goes. Um, so I'm going to just start over here. Give me one second. So, yeah. So I'm going to, um, what I'm looking for, I'm going to pull up in a second. I'm going to send you the link to a story in the Columbia Chronicle. And I want you to just take it, uh, give it a quick look at, um, Give it a quick, very quick read. Yeah, I think it's easier if we, if I just send you the link in the chat than us trying to read it together. But, so here, I, I put a link to a Chronicle story in the chat. You should see it now. Give that a read. Um, let's take a lot four or five minutes and then we'll come back and talk about it. Probably four, so it's time is ticking quickly. Yeah, so we I got it. through it. So I you I'm got a, through it. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm a slow reader, so I I always uh, <laughs> want to give people time. So great. So what are some thoughts as, as 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 you looked at it? What are what what things in that story worked for you, and what things you thought could have been better or um, done done um, more efficiently? And then I'll talk, I'll explain a little bit about process while I'm asking this. Anything stand out, anything to work, Beth? Yeah. I was struck by the fact the, the first example, Arthur Epps, I was wondering how much it actually cost to get him to Phoenix. Yeah. And if there was a way just to get him there, if that's actually the goal or if there was more complications with the goal and how to, how to actually follow it. Yeah, that's another good point. Sharon? Yeah, there's so many ways you could go with this. Yeah. One of the things I love about it 
is that it doesn't it isn't based on generalizations about people on the streets from people who aren't on the streets and in fact it has it respects the lived experience of people in the situation to be yeah. able to explain to us what their situation is yeah anyone else so this was um i'm, I'm going to make sure i'm looking in the chat um um, Heather said, I don't think they needed to include the quote from the school administrator about not interacting with the panhandling community. Um, uh, someone else agreed. I like that it was clear that people are taking control of their health, even given the obstacles. So another thing, if you note it on, on the story, it said this story was reported over three months. And um, part of the reason for that was some of the process things we've been talking about earlier. It started from um, the student who is very sharp and is now um, working at a, um, a, doing what he loves, which is sports reporting um, um, at a um, paper. And I figure he's moved around so much. I, I'm not, uh, I don't remember where he is right at the moment, but um, one of the things, so this started at one of those amorphous conversations where I want to do something about homeless people or homeless, you know, panhandlers and homelessness. And we had to have discussions about, well, how do you know, you know, every panhandler may not be homeless. Um, there may be reasons that they're asking. We shouldn't make assumptions about, you know, um, what they're doing. So we finally got that. And then the next thing was actually one of the things um, for journalists and, and working with young journalists is actually you have to go talk to people and making them and, and getting past that barrier. And he started doing these things and it took, it took some nudging, but this went on long enough. And then as things were changing in the pandemic uh, so rapidly, um, by the time we thought we had the story in shape, we had to say, I, we had to go back and talk to these people again, because what may have been true a couple of months ago may not be true today. And so we want to go back and do that again. But um, I think after all of that, I think we ended up with pretty much a, um, a, a readable, uh, doable story um, that, um, that, uh, that that worked out pretty well. And I thought the student felt generally good about it. Um, and I think it did go as a way to pointing out some of the complexities with people who are on the street or sometime um, soliciting on the street. Um, so I think those things were good. Um, another um, example of this happened to me just the other day when uh, one of my students wanted to talk, she, um, one of the Chronicle reporters here um, proposed a story about um, water um, uh, water mains uh, and you know lead and stuff in the in in in, in, in the city's um, water system. Um, so I asked her, well, how is that going to um, work for our readership? Who's our audience? Um, many of our students who are not actually homeowners, um, so you know they might. This may not be a big level of concern. And then finally, she said, "Well, maybe I could ask people: Are they noticing any impact on in their clothing when they wash or stuff like that?" And it was we were going through these stretches, and um, I um, nicely kind of did what I at the moment did put a knife in that particular story for us right now. And um, so one of the reasons why on my bulletin board here, there is a sign that was helpfully developed by one of our students that said, why now, why us? And so that's how one of the, one of the ways at our college paper, we start zooming in on why are we taking this big idea? How does this idea impact us? And um, it comes down to who's your audience. And so I, again, think this is applicable to whatever you're doing. If the student is working on a research paper or if they're doing a, um, a, um, a short doc or rather who's gonna see it and who's gonna do it. And that again, like forces you 
Yeah. Um, I, I, I later learned that the student was actually interested in that because she lived in one of the south suburbs where this was an issue. Um, so that story on the south suburb might not work for the Chronicle so much, but it would work for Chicago Talks, another, um, another news outlet we have. So um, steering her from an idea that, that didn't work in one place might have worked in another. So it's all about, you know, getting people to think audience too. I think we have about four or five minutes. I'm going to yeah. open that up to if anyone has any questions or ideas or tips of your own for boiling things down from taking someone from a great big amorphous idea and boiling it down to something that actually becomes a pitch for a solid story or project. Curtis. Just to let you know, uh, my Zoom has frozen up, so I can't actually see the new chats. So I'll just okay. ask you to monitor okay. it if, in case any questions come in. I sure will. I, um, I did put I did put a question in the chat that I have for you, uh, Curtis. Hey, it's Brian. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, if you if you um, uh, if the student starts small, you know, with with a more specific right idea like you're talking about, I'm wondering, like, if the editing process is different, right, or or if it's shorter, you know. No doubt it's shorter. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think, um, yeah, because you have broken down a lot of, um, you know, the, the discussion. I mean, you're, you're, you're closer to that center of the Tootsie Roll, right? Uh -huh. from the start. So that, that does save you some time. Um, and the other thing, though, I mean, I don't want to say that it's always bad or should see this. It's not necessarily a bad thing to start with this big idea. It's just a job we have to work with because sometimes they have this idea and, you know, oh, that's not one. So, oh, there's like three or four stories here. But this is the one we want to take out now. Maybe we'll go back to one of those other projects later. It's not all one thing, but you know, yeah. and, and that's why I, 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 I talk about how I've learned to say no to people more because they have to make a decision and you're modeling from them what you want them to start doing in their own heads, you know, of saying, no, I can't, I can't do both of these things right now, although they both may relate to homelessness or they both may relate to poverty. I'm going to focus on this one thing right now for my story. Sharon, what did you have? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just love this so much. And I love the fact that you encourage them to think about why they care about a particular topic yeah. before they get into it. Um, I was going to give another little trick that um, Curtis knows this trick, mm -hmm. but it's like you come with gentrification. You go, OK, that is a whole shelf of books in yeah. the library. <laughs> yeah. Now, can you get down to one book? Oh, yeah. how about gentrification in Chicago? Cool. Can you get it down to a chapter? You know, and, and, and you keep kind of moving it down or it's like it's a whole, you know, it's a it's a shelf. It's a book. It's a magazine. It's an article in a magazine. And like any of these like funneling approaches can work really well for all kinds of. Yeah, I love that too. idea. Yeah. And I love to do it in a way. I think one thing we especially working with young people and working with students is there's a way to do it without, um, you know, demoralizing them or making them feel you know, that this is like, this is just bad, it doesn't work, but you're taking like, um, you know, uh, this, this big uh, um, swath of cloth and doing something with it, maybe making a dress or a pair of pants, not a, not a whole roll of a gar garment material. So I have to announce that um, there, there are sessions that are gonna start at 1.30, so people are free to go, but the conversation can continue here for a few minutes as well. That's that's no problem at all. My um, my um, my my email is at the top of the chat, and I'm just going to put it again here. If anyone has any um, questions, or you know, just want to continue this conversation with me, or has any additional tips that I didn't think of that might be helpful to me, please shoot me an email. I'd love to talk to you further. I had a question, Curtis. I've always yeah. thought that students, like I imagine student journalists, but I remember students having to do like ethnographic interviews for first year writing and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Not journalists necessarily, so maybe it's different, but they have anxiety about 
approaching people or like entering into the world and having a conversation with a stranger. And I'm thinking that this kind of um, making it tangible and small yeah. must provide an easier entry for them, I'm guessing. I mean, just I think emotionally for them, yeah. yeah. Because, and a lot of times, so maybe this idea started with a conversation with someone, maybe they started, maybe they're um, a person that um, they met in their travels. And I would ask them, well, did you ask them who else they know who has an interest in this? And that's like, um, I use it in the classroom, I have to call it, you know, finding connectors and stuff to take you places. Um, I, I, I did a, a lot of my reporting at the Sun Times was spent in public housing. And, you know, these are communities, but for, uh, you know, very good reasons, um, don't always accept outsiders easily. There's a good reason for that. How do you do that? How do you break it? And I always had, I didn't just, you know, walk into, uh, you know, the former Stateway Gardens or somewhere and just start chatting people up. I always had people that helped me, that knew someone, and they made me think, this guy's okay, I'm going to talk to him. So that's another way to kind of build on that, I find. Yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah. Hmm. Learning from um, having a topic that's very broad, what happens when a student comes in with a very small topic? And then how do you get them to expand it enough to get to so that it could be an article? Yeah. Uh, go from, uh, I'll use Sharon's um, example, go from a paragraph <laughs> to, to a few, to a page. That's a very good question. Um, Beth, did you raise your hand? I thought, oh, she was saying goodbye. I thought, <laughs> I thought she was gonna answer your question. So, I mean, I think that's another, that, that's an excellent question. And um, I think you start by, again, using that question, questioning thing and, you know, talking to them about, um, I'm trying to think of something small, like, um, you know, someone has a problem with getting, um, oh, exploited in some way, maybe I, I don't, you know, being cheated at, at the store or, oh, I, I got one. Um, there's been issues that, and we've written about some of these things where the um, people um, on the internet are um, de deceiving students like with these um, online schemes, you know, like, you know, walk my dog uh, for, you know, you know, Twenty dollars an hour, and it turns out they're you know, and then send me this money. These scams. You might have a you know about a scam. Are other people being scammed like this? Is this a problem throughout? Whom would I talk to? So um, a, a a question. You know who who's who's responsible for overseeing things like this? So if it, it was a Columbia student writing about this, I might talk. Is is there a um uh um director of, um, I'm trying to think of her name right now, there is um, Coke, uh, um, Kathy Coke, I think it is, who oversees, you know, our um, internet function. So she, you know, maybe ask her, is this a wider problem? I heard this one example, is it bigger than that? Um, so I mean, who, who, who's, who, who, who's responsible? And it may be a government agency, but somebody's responsible for whatever this the problem they're having for, for dealing with these type of issues and maybe go to them. Well, thanks everyone. I've Thank seen you. people are going on hopefully to the next sessions. Thank Take you. care. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Th th thanks, Arlie, for encouraging for me to do this and for your help. Oh, no problem. Thanks. Um, I enjoyed it. All right. All right. Thank you, Curtis. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Janet. Thank you for your questions. Thanks, Janet.